Hey guys. I'm Bob. I'm Barb. Together we make up... Head of Squirrel. So Bob, my question for you today mm -hmm. that we want to discuss is does our Riverstone Legacy have frame flex? The answer is yes and no. So stay tuned. So Bob, what do you mean by yes or no? Well, yes, because all RVs have frame flex. Okay. That's just part of the RV has to have movement. The no is, no, we do not have any kind of frame damage, but we would like you to stay and watch this video in whole. We want to explain our river sound and how it's constructed. So yeah. Bob, let's start out with what is the definition yeah. of frame flex? Okay, for me, frame flex, this is my definition and all the research I've done. Frame flex is part of an RV. It's just like it's part of a bridge, part of an airplane, part of anything that's built, a building. It all has to have flex, otherwise things will crack. So when it becomes a problem is when the flex does not return back to its original engineered spot. So yes. once the frame no longer returns back to the engineered spot, it becomes frame damage or frame crack. And that's when it becomes a problem to me. So the purpose of this video today is we're gonna be discussing our Riverstone legacy that you see behind us yep. and the issues of the frame flex or frame damage. Yep. This is not to dig on any kind of manufacturers that are out there or anybody having issues or problems. We're just trying to explain from our viewpoint uh, what it is and how Riverstone's built around it. Right now, we're just trying to be the biggest cheerleader we can for our manufacturer because we believe they build an awesome frame. Yeah. And the way the front area is constructed with all steel, uh, no aluminum. So that's what we're going to try to discuss today with this video. Bob, what are some of the things you see when a camper or an RV incurs frame damage? Well, from all my research, is it, it could start almost anywhere in the frame itself from front to back. But normally, the pin box or the pin area, it will start being pushed up into the front cap because of a weld that's broke or compromised. Or it could be moldings on the outside of the front cap that are moving around when the when the weight of the RV is taken off of the jacks. It can also be inside the camper. You can have floor buckling. Yeah. You can have cabinets that are moving around. Yep. You can have doors that no longer close. Those are all signs that the frame is not returned back to its original engineered spot. So next, let's talk a little bit about the construction of RVs in general as far as the frame and the RV. <laughs> yeah, so you have you have a frame, and most of them are designed by Lippert. Um, those are designed by whatever manufacturer uh, engineers their product, and then they get Lippert the specs, and they send it back to them. And then what happens is they build a they build a uh, wall system that connects to that frame, which gives it that rigid strength. And that's all part of the RV. It's an integral part, the wall and the frame to the strength of the RV. So before buying this big old puppy behind us, we, we actually spent five years researching and we recommend this to anyone who's looking for an RV, especially today. Not that you have to put in five years of research, but go to the RV shows. Talk to people that have similar units that you might be interested in. You know, find out how they're doing and how they're not doing. I mean, and there's even a chance that no matter how perfect they are, you could still get an imperfect RV. Things happen, they're made by man so far, so things go wrong. But definitely put in your research. We went to the Tampa RV show. We used to go to the Hershey show. We spent a lot of time asking questions. And then we also decided we figured out which one we really liked we started hitting factories and then from there we narrowed it down to the riverstone and we went to the riverstone factory like several times and really spent a lot of time with them and the process of how it was being built and we saw with our own eyes and our link our video below for our riverstone tour so you can see we just want to show you a little bit about the way our frame is constructed so all rvs are constructed with steel steel across here Coming through here, 
to this point right here this is where a lot of fatigue is always at because it's under a lot of weight then they got a they got a beam down through here and that's where pretty much where all manufacturers stop what Riverstone does they they continue this big eye beam and with no brakes it comes all the way back all the way back all the way back here to here and inside here and we're going to try to show you this the best we can but it's all covered up but inside here if you look at the floor up in here the ceiling or the, the ceiling it's all steel there's no aluminum built so this is all tied in to the main structure but back in here and i'm going into our electronic cabinet but back here and i'm not sure how well this is going to take there's not much light in here but this is this is the beam that i'm hitting right there this beam continues up here it's a six inch i'd say it's a six inch square beam up in here and it's all the way over to here it goes all the way to the other side so this beam this beam i'm tapping on is right here it's like a six inch beam and then you got your beam from the front all the way back to here that's where it makes the riverstone riverstone legacy so now i'm going to take you inside and i'm going to show you the same way how you know where it comes down to so you can see how far it goes versus where the other one stops here we are at the front of our beautiful riverstone legacy and it starts a little bit more on the outside that you can't see here because of the inside but the where it stops normally is right here by this window so right here is where your frame typically stops our frame continues on until you get to here and then the box bob talked about is right here so we have all this extra right here that is what's helping to protect us because it's all steel yep solid yeah. ha! our riverstone legacy the way it's constructed is it's got a 12 inch i-beam that goes the full length it also has an eight inch drop frame up front yep and inside that you have your pin box but going back where most campers go back and i'll show you on some pictures we're going to show but when when the frame comes back and it drops down in front of the landing gear that's where most rvs end riverstone continues that that cage of all steel there's no aluminum involved in that it's all steel up front which gives it that extra strength up front to handle that pin weight here Tom is demonstrating. The camper is like a leaf spring, which allows it to flex. Then he shows us how the frame kind of stacks on top one another. And basically, you, what is it now, Bobby says? Well, you have you have a 12-inch I-beam frame. Along up front, you have an 8-inch stacked frame, which gives support for the hitch. These supports are not for the floor, but to tie together the top and the bottom frame, basically making it a steel cage. Wow, that's a lot of steel, Bob. Yes, it is. What do other campers have? Most campers up front are put together with aluminum and not steel. Where Riverstone stands alone is they, they weld their entire front cage to create the strength for the hitch. Their walls are constructed on 16 inch on center yep. aluminum walls that are constructed and they are screwed in. They're not welded to where a weld can break while you got some flex going down the road. These are got Sika flex in between an L bracket that holds that 16 inch on wall, 16 inch on center wall all the way from front to back. And even more than 16 inches on center if there's a window or door in its place. So these things are well, well constructed. And that's why we felt very strongly about going to the factory tour and seeing how this thing is constructed. It, it, it's a monster, it's heavy. It thinks 18,000 pounds dry, so we know it yeah. is well put <laughs> yeah. together with a lot of metal. Yeah. And and don't worry about imposing on the factory. I mean, if you're gonna spend money, no matter what the cost is, small or large, you wanna make sure you're investing in something that is, especially if it's gonna end up being your full-time home on the road, something that's gonna work for you and keep you safe. So don't worry about asking questions, don't worry about scheduling tours, just do it. Yeah, they, they have no problem with you taking the tours also they always start out with the frame, so right away you know what the skeleton looks like because yep. you don't get to see the frame once the thing is put together. It's all hidden, either underbelly or inside of walls. So it's nice to be able to see it all uncovered. 
and we definitely recommend you take pictures or some video for yourself and especially like even this is a side note off of it where all your wiring is you yeah. know before it's finished because we went as ours was being constructed along the way mm -hmm. so then if we need to know where something is we already know so that's just a little pro tip yeah we were just lucky we were only a couple hours from uh, the rv capital of the world elkhart, elkhart. so yeah. we were only a couple hours away so we got to see it right as it was being built yeah. One thing I want to point out is that no matter how well it is or isn't built, that if you don't take care of your RV, you're going to have problems. And some of them could lead to some of these frame damage issues. Part of it is overloading the payload. I mean, you need to understand what your camper is. You need to understand what is the capacity of what it can hold. And the difference is yeah. what you can put in there. Yeah, they give you a car carrying capacity sticker on there so you know how much you can put in it. You just have to abide by that because yeah. you, once you get past that, you are overloading the frame. Yeah. We have seen so many RVs and campgrounds that are so overloaded. Yeah. Overloaded. I mean, just packed full. And it could be they've got all kinds of cooking stuff outside. Then they've got all kinds of stuff inside. And the rule of I need everything and the kitchen sink okay keep the kitchen sink out it comes with one but you don't you only need what you need the early rvers before all the ones that you guys know today rv youtubers was all about downsizing downsizing makes sense oh i think i just promoted another channel but yeah. <laughs> downsizing because you you only really need what you need you see us wear the same shirts all the time because they're on a rotation um and then we something comes in then you send something out I mean, you need to learn that this is a simpler kind of life and you, you really need to think about what am I putting in the camper and, and what is my total weight. Secondly, you need to look for possible water damage, something that's coming in the door, something that's coming in the windows, you know, somewhere where there could be a problem because that's going to damage your structure of your RV as well if you don't catch it in time. Yeah, if you get a leak in a wall and it sleeks down, it gets into the wood. Yeah. That like we said earlier, the structure or that frame chassis is all um, glue. It's all put together with the walls and the frame. It all makes one structure. Yep. So once yep. that's compromised with water, you know it could be it could be your problem. And then lastly, this rig here is not a four wheeling vehicle. Yep. You're not going to be driving it off the road, being crazy. Um, you need to think about when you're driving too. I mean, accidents happen, but we saw not too long ago where somebody was driving and they just turned too soon. And then their whole camper end went off the road and bent up their frame and everything. So it's not a four wheeling vehicle. There are RVs or vans or, you know, things that can go off road, that's, yeah. that's fine. But the majority of the fifth wheels and even some of the bumper pulls are not meant to go off road. No, not as much. I mean, as much as you think they can, they're yeah. not set up to do it. So if you take care of your camper, this is our home. And I like the fact that no matter where I go in three and a half years in the United States and 32,000 miles, that no matter where we go, we set it up, I'm at home. Everything is set up, everything's normal. I look out the window, I have a different view. Sometimes it's a beautiful lake, sometimes it's a beautiful forest, yep. sometimes it's an RV in my face like this, yep. but that's okay. You know, the fact is, is that this is my home with me. So we always take care of it and we always make sure that it is safe so that we're safe. Yep. So the big reason why we want to do this video, we just wanted to be big cheerleaders for Riverstone Legacy which we love our legacy. Yeah. It has been an incredible machine over the last three and a half years. And we didn't want to condemn any manufacturers. We don't care about condemning any other manufacturers. We only care about yeah. ours and what how they build a nice rig for us. But the reason why we started doing all this was mainly because the internet and the YouTube yeah. are just buzzing with with this frame flex stuff. And and so I've been watching a lot of videos on I'm like man oh man I mean some of it you just don't know if it's the frames were underbuilt or you know they were under engineered either by the manufacturer we're not sure we're not like we said we're not here to condemn anybody on that we just wanted to yeah we know there's a group that has a huge issue that is a real issue out there and we feel for you guys for yeah. sure and we're hoping that yeah. you guys get taken care of yeah we hope so I mean that's all we just know that our Riverstone to date, we've not heard of anybody having nope. frame flex or frame crack. I mean, it's not even frame flex at that point. It's frame broken. Yep. So, 
if anybody's heard anything of that they can let us know in the comments okay disclaimer we are not a riverstone ambassador or nor are we being paid for this video in any way in nope. fact i'm pretty sure riverstone would never pay us to do anything for them yeah <laughs> so there <laughs> um so we hope that you like this video please give us a thumbs up smash up that notification bell because we're all about rv trips and travels and can-am spider rides so you yep. need to be on the journey with us yep. bob would like you to just give us your comments let us know have you had a camper with frame flex or frame cracked did the manufacturer take care of you when you had that problem if you know of any river stones that have had issues yeah please tell us let, let us know because we'd like to know if the factory did take care of them i think they probably would remember we're headed world come travel in our credible world bye